lemon amiga bread. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. This time it gives me great pleasure to play Turrican, developed of course by Factor 5 and released of course by Rainbow Arts in 1990. going to be a long review so let's start at the beginning and what I like to do of course is to get the extra upgrades and the extra life right from the start and players always go for the extra life and know about that and that makes the game slightly easier because four lives is better than three and those hidden power up cash boxes are hidden just like a Mario game you'll have to shoot them and then that makes them appear on the landscape Primary mode of firepower is the gun and that can be upgraded to a five way split that you can see I'm using or a laser gun and that was improved in the sequel where we even got a rebound gun as well but those power up to I think two levels you can collect the first one and then the second one powers us all the way up and those are handy to dispatch most of the enemies that you'll find on these levels. see seamless copper color grading effects as we go into those caves and it goes dark not that most players will really notice that but that is a seamless effect on the Amiga and that happens instantly so really do love those early color touches don't forget this was a 1990 game and there wasn't much on the Amiga in 1990 which really show off its capabilities and with this one you can see we don't have boring platforms they are textured and you can see that even though we have a scattering of rocks all over the screen with the enemies that we have to get through it's pretty good and we can make progress pretty quickly that is until we get an asteroid field on our heads and that means that we can hold down that fire button and that instigates what I like to call the ghost laser Ghostbusters laser and that surround laser will surround us completely 360 degrees and it should mean that that protects us against most things I'm not sure it protects us against the bullets but those enemies wandering into that thing are dead so if you get into a tricky situation all you have to do is to hold down that fire button thing we can do is press the space bar and that will release a power wave and that thing is reasonably strong although it won't kill the best enemies in the game and you can see I'm trying to lure out an extra life here if I can find the extra life and if it remains at the bottom I can sometimes collect that and pick that up and also the gems as well that they drop. No 
other thing we can do is to press the ALT key. I think it is, and that releases a smart bomb. If you fire that into midair, it won't do anything. But if you fire that against the rock, it will blow up, and it will blow up most of the things, in fact, most everything on that screen. You can see we have five smart bombs at the moment, five mines, and six, actually, power waves. So that means that if we use those up while we have them, it means that we can use them up. Of course, once we die, we'll lose all the ones we've collected, and we'll go down to a default. Three, three, and three. And you can see the crystals don't default. Once we have those crystals collected, they'll be logged onto the bottom of that screen. And you can also set a time limit as well. And so in this section, you will find, well, apart from lobbing grenades at bosses, you will find a bonus area. If I remember to go there, it doesn't look like I have. If you go to the left of that top area and jump off of it you'll find a platform and that will lead all the way to a bonus section we can find extra lives and that looks like I forgot to do that on this particular playthrough We've reached the end of that level, so all we need to do is to jump through it, and that means that we move on to level 1.2. It's always worth firing randomly around the screen, and that will reveal things. Sometimes it reveals the boss as well. So let's lob a couple of grenades into that and a power wave. That gets rid of it. And so the bosses in this game, even though they look hard, can be dealt with pretty rapidly. And I haven't even gone through the power ball yet. With the rolling ball that you can activate by holding down the fire button and pressing the space bar while pulling the stick backwards. And that will mean, hopefully, that you can roll up into a tiny ball. And I think you press the space bar while pulling backwards, that means you can roll around the level. One thing this game is not short of is extra lives, and if you explore all those corners, you are bound to find them. And in this particular corner, I think you can get there in two ways. I'm actually going the long way, and that actually means that we can't collect an extra life, so I'm going to have to go back. And I'm going to backtrack on myself because I don't like those leaps of faith. You can see with that energy that we've got at the moment, we're going to have to do that. Hopefully that will reveal an extra life. Or at those stars, you can see all our shields and we found the extra life, that's great. But we're actually going the wrong way now down that level, so the shield is worn off. We're going to have to be extra careful. It's action packed straight from the start with lightning bolts trying to kill us and landscape trying to kill us as well and cannons you can see trying to kill us and the controls in this game especially with the decent controller and joystick are immaculate and of course they're very responsive to the pixel you really need that when you're trying to loop the loop and round robin your way along these platforms and that's one of the great things i can say about something like a speed king or a zip stick they really do make this game a joy although i'm not holding the controller in the conventional method for this game as i will explain a little bit later on for the moment you can see we're in a cave and the lighting will get a bit brighter once we get out of here hopefully and you can see things bouncing around let's grab them let's grab that shield and you can see i prefer the laser that's my preferred weapon Oh, 
From that Turrican 2, we cannot jump on the enemy's heads, and that was definitely improved in Turrican 2, so you have to remember that. If you jump on enemy's heads, you'll simply take damage, and it's a great noise when we take damage. It's a very painful noise, and we don't like to hear that, because it's a very great noise, and it's one of the best dying noises that I've probably ever heard in a video game. You can see P will power us up all the way, and power in this case is energy, or health, whatever you want to call that. And you can see L means that we get, I think, a new power line, I'm not quite sure. And we can also pick up mines, which will move on right to the end of the game. And the grenades, you can see we've been firing lots of grenades already. This is being played live, as far as I'm concerned, in the Lemon Amiga competition, or it was when I recorded this, and this is my longest try at this game. I had a quick warm up, and then this is my longest try. So, what I'm actually doing is exploring all of these levels so that I can find some gems. And gems aren't really important, but in a high scoring run they are. So, what I'm actually doing is exploring things maybe I wouldn't normally explore in order to find those gems. And I think with Turrican 2 you get a gem bonus even at the end of the level, you definitely do with Turrican 3. I'm not quite sure of this game, but you get the points of course. So look at that, a mine, that'll blow us up. What can we do about that? Well, we can actually fire a grenade, and what that will do is blow up that mine, and if you fire the grenade against the wall, that'll blow up that mine. So we're 100% safe to collect those gems, as long as we have those grenades. Another thing we can do is to duck down into our roller ball, and that's definitely one thing that we'll see me doing at key moments in this game. Although, unlike Metroid, it doesn't really force us to use that, and it's not even critical to even know about that. So, holding back on the controller and pressing that space bar, you can do that, but for me, it's better to press that control key, unless it's something easy like that, like a massive row of spikes. Um, we can definitely roll against all of these spikes, but getting out at the other end is a problem. So we're not going to do that, we're going to bravely continue on and see what else is down. These are in use of death, and um, let's see if that reveals any gems, or any lives, or even any more spikes. Seems to have revealed nothing, and jumping all these infinite jumps one after another could get repetitive if you're using an NES controller, but of course we're not. We're using a dedicated zip stick, so what can we do? We can evade all these spikes, or roll our way through them, and just like Turrican 3 that we saw, look at that. But what I'm going to actually do is jump over this, because I've run out of grenades. That should reveal an end of level flying around boss with a jetpack that might remind me of Forgotten Worlds, the arcade game. He's actually above us, you can see him right in the corner, right in the corner there of the image, but he's not going to spawn, so what I'm actually going to do, of course, is to leg it towards the exit. I'd just like to mention the music for every level is phenomenal, and it's one of the best musics that I'd ever heard on an Amiga game up to this point in history. Don't forget, 1990, we were used to US gold conversion music, and that really did not hit the sweet spot as far as the Paula that we have on the Amiga. I 
As you can probably tell, I've played this game a billion times and so I should know where everything is, but unfortunately I did miss a few things on this playthrough, like that jump off the highest point that I mentioned earlier on. But one thing that I do not want to get involved with is the spikes at the bottom of this pit, and for that you have to stand on the edge with one foot over it, like that, and then you can make that jump. Otherwise, it's an endlessly repeating falling down manoeuvre as you keep falling down these steps. I remember that, doing that a million times, so let's not bother on this playthrough. And what is the to gain by going up here? Well, not a lot, to be honest, but these enemies are worth score on this high scoring run. I didn't clear any of the levels completely, but I did clear some of the levels, so I'm keen to get rid of these cannons, for one thing, because I really don't need cannons in this game, and so you can see that the game really does lead the player along a linear path, and we can't get any further in this direction, so what we're going to do is to go all the way to the left, and that should reveal some extra bonuses, but we can, if we wanted to, make our way through this area, again it's not really possible, but we can actually get up there by jumping on the spikes, and we can make it. Turrican on the Amiga is a joy to play for me, I absolutely love it and I'd play this game anytime, the only downside of it is it's way too short, and so you've probably memorised every nook and cranny of it like me, so this is all familiar territory, and there's probably nothing in this review that the average player hasn't seen, but that's what's so great about it, if you're hammering that controller, you can get through those enemies, you can get further every time, and so you can see all of these bits without dying and dying and dying, and we have played those games where you die a lot before you get to places, one up, and so don't die in this game, you simply collect 1-ups, if you jump off and make leaps of faith you're usually rewarded, so we're up to 17 lives at the moment, you can see we have one rollerball left of the three that we can carry at any one point, we'll get those replenished if we die, you can see 17 lives and 3 continues, and we won't be using any continues in this review because it's the Lemon Amiga competition, not allowed to use any, so the time limit is usually absolutely plentiful, and look at that, another three lives, and we can even jump back along that way, so you can see the graphics are pretty sparse, but this was using bitmaps, and block tiles, and you had to convert that block tile into a bitmap on the Amiga, and for the Commodore 64 you could literally just scroll it, but that really did push these computers to some kind of new limit at the time, you can see the scrolling is again immaculate and very smooth, or at least it should be, because it was on the original machine, and it's playing music and sound effects at the same time, it's got multiple enemies bouncing around and doing random things at exactly the same time, and they will follow you once you trigger them, so sometimes they will disappear though off that screen, which is a bit of annoying when you're trying to get high scoring run. Here you can jet on straight towards the exit, but what I'm actually doing is clearing this level out a bit more, and I'm convinced that there's something up the top, there you go, of one of these towers that puts us up to 21 lives, so that's fantastic. Unfortunately you don't get any score whatsoever by removing those blocks, and we can get rid of those blocks, and look at that area, who'd want to go through all those spikes? 
Well, not that many players, it has to be said, but you can see this area is yet again another dead end, so the levels are linear, you have to follow a path even though you wouldn't recognise that you have to do that, and this level does have a shortcut so you can run straight towards the exit, but that's not what we're going to do, we're going to go the slow way, and just before we speed this footage up, let's just brave it through. And is there an extra life there? Yes there is, or two, and that means if we avoid the spikes, definitely if we have full health going into this section, there is absolutely no reason why we can't get out of it with some health remaining, and if you lose a life, so what, you've just picked up four. So if we jump on the edges of those platforms, we should be safe, and we can time it, but rushing through just like this because it actually took me an hour and 50 minutes to play this game so we're rushing through not only for the sake of my patience but also for this review and maybe you can duck in with the gyro ball to collect those extra few but what we're actually going to do is speed up that footage and I'm actually going to go through this entire complex and find all of those diamonds all those crystals and all those enemies that I can get as well and let's just take that shortcut hopefully and jump back in somewhere that we can get to towards the end of that level I now collected as much as I possibly can, or at least hopefully, and going the long way around all these levels, we're finally towards the end of it, and the end of it, usually I duck into a gyro ball and roll my way all the way down to the bottom of the level, but for this scoring run, let's uncover this weapon cache, get those points, and with a shield, you are absolutely invulnerable to everything, including spikes, and in the gyro ball, the weapon ball, you are absolutely impervious to everything including spikes as well. So with those two shield mechanics on the go, there really is no reason for most players to get convinced that this game is very difficult, although I have met players who are convinced that it is, and every single time I play this game I go into this corner expecting there to be something there there isn't, so hopefully for the last time Let's skip that and move on to that next level. This is world 2.1 and in here we find all manner of more things trying to kill us but with that laser it is possible and you can see crystals there I know that there isn't a pit of death there so what I'm going to do is collect that crystal and in this corner well you have to be careful not to shoot the platforms you can see I'm not shooting that collecting the health at the end of it and now that gives us another two lives and it's great to hear what up as you collect those on the Turrican games and it's those voice sound effects and other sound effects playing together as well as the music as well as the smooth scrolling which made this impressive back in the day just as impressive as Impossible Mission was on the Commodore 64. levels you can simply march through and you will get hit occasionally by things that are virtually impossible to destroy, it doesn't really matter, you'll get punished and it's not like an NES game where you can or have to avoid every single thing on the level, no you can just wade through, especially with 26 lives on the go, you can just wade through, take the hits, 
And that's fantastic because it means that you don't have to get stuck. It means you can keep going on. And if you die, then that's no problem. And those fish you can see down there, they're actually piranha. And yet again, they don't respawn if you move off that area. So that's a shame. I'm playing the WHD load game at the moment because it's a lot faster than the disc version that we grew up with and the only great thing about the disc version is it's got that loading music and it's got music throughout the entire experience just like the last ninja 2 on the commodore 64 it's absolutely peppered with music all the way through it all different music and don't forget this came on maybe two discs or well, one disc if you got the budget version, which I had, but originally it came on two discs and the US Gold budget version was bugged because I had it and you couldn't get through level 5, it said insert disc 2 and you couldn't insert disc 2 because there wasn't a disc 2, so I took it back to the shop and it was exactly the same on the entire batch so I got another disc 1 and it was exactly the same So what I had to do, unfortunately, was relinquish the fact that, that was a dodgy copy re-released by US Gold. If you had the crack version of this game, the screen used to flash. And it used to be the signals to change disc if the screen was flashing all the time. Fortunately, that thing would flash several times between loads of every level it seemed and you had to keep swapping those discs around if you had a one disc system and I'm not sure whether it recognised a second disc drive but the crack version in this case was not very good because it was decrunched and that means that you had to keep swapping those discs. This undersea level, not that you can tell that it is undersea, but you can tell that the piranha will get us if we don't use those hasty manoeuvres, and yes, we can just simply use that laser. And we will face an end of level boss, or a mid level boss shortly, and so let's see how we deal with that. Much of a problem. I'm used to playing the Commodore 64 version, and the last time I played this was on the Lemon Tube 64 review channel where we reviewed this, and so I've already reviewed the 64 version. And this, of course, is a live play from the competition. So let's explore those areas, check those corners, as it says, on aliens. And we'll find aliens a bit later on. And if this game reminds you of Metroid, well, the coder and the designer of this game, Manfred Trends, did admit eventually that it was, in part, based on Metroid. So if you will find similar power-ups and things like that, that's because it was inspired actually by Metroid. You can see I found another secret area or maybe an area that you just have to be careful in and as long as you are careful people that have played this level will know this section hopefully and as long as you are tiptoeing around and not gung-ho you can collect all those gems all those lives. That's great, puts up to 29 lives on this level in this game. And yes, Manfred Trends was also inspired by Psycho Nick's Oscar, which apparently was his favourite arcade game. I'm pressing the fire button like crazy because auto fire isn't allowed I don't think in the competition or even if it is I'm not using it because if you use auto fire you can't use that surround laser and that becomes critical 
later on. And I like that handy with an emergency measure. So what I'm actually doing in this game is holding the controller differently to how I normally control it. Yes, 99.999% of the time I'm sitting there holding the controller. It's in my left hand and I'm holding the control knob or the controller with my right hand pushing it down left and right and with my left hand thumb I'm pressing the fire button. But for this particular game the only way that I have learnt to play it is to put that controller actually on my left knee. My left hand is the grip and the direction you move that around and I press the fire button with my right hand very rapidly just like an arcade controller. Of course, controlling a controller, the joystick, with the left hand instead of the right is problematic because it's like trying to handle something left-handed. But if you remember in the arcades, Pac-Man and all the rest of it, they were all left-handed controllers. Why is that? Well, people realise that you can hammer a fire button quicker with your right hand. So what I'm actually doing is hammering the fire button quickly with my right hand just like the arcade machines and that's precisely why they did it because you can't hammer with your left hand a fire button as quickly as you can with the right hand. Check it out, you can't. So that's what I'm doing, even though it's very unwieldy at first to be left-handed and use that thing as a left-handed controller, actually when you hammer him with the fire button with the right hand and use him the diagonals to jump, really you do get used to it and eventually, well, I have had since the 1990s to get used to it, I've definitely played this game and completed it maybe 10, 20 plus times and I've learnt this game the hard way, usually on the Commodore 64. The Amiga does have advantages over C64 and when I was holding my hands up wondering whether to get an Amiga or not, this game did come up as a factor along with Defender of the Crown. Anyone who's seen the 664 Defender of the Crown will know it's pretty similar to the Amiga and I had that and looked at it and I thought, well, if the C64 can do Defender of the Crown, it can do Turrican, why do I need an Amiga? I can simply buy exactly the same games on the C64. The collision detection is at a premium at this particular point and destructible platforms, you have to be ready for them and I'm hoping that there are extra crystals or extra gems, something down here which will make it very much worth it. Let's see and power up, well we can collect that power up. What else is down here? Is it going to be worth it or is it just a dead end? Well it's a dead end. And so this is an exploration run maybe of all of the aspects of this game and so you can't blame me for trying, it's a lethal formula sometimes exploring the game but you can see with 32 lives we can afford to take a few risks. <laughs> Brought us all the way back to the start. That's no problem because once the enemies are dead, they are dead. Apart from one or two, the shoot which will fire garbage down, that fires continually. But apart from that, there are other things which, when you shoot them, they are dead. It's a great wave splash effect as well when we enter water and we're splashing around. Hopefully, after playing this game 20 or 30 times, like I say, I'll remember 
which way to go to get to that exit. I usually roll through here, but this is now uh, the end of level boss. What do we have? Three grenades and three lightning storms. And now we just hold down the fire button and I've known this thing to get very close indeed before it blows up. That's very scary sometimes when it gets within a pixel, but if you have all those buttons pressed, you can get through it. leads on to one of my favourite levels, if maybe not the favourite level in the entire game. Yes, when was the last time you saw Metroid turning into a shoot 'em up and actually rise through a level? And you can get stuck in the scenery, so that's definitely one hazard to watch out for. And so the best thing to do is to go from shield to shield and try to shield your way through the level. Also tremendous music on this level and we did get this also on the C64 but on the Amiga it's a great rendition of it and it's a cool classic that I remember every single time I play this game. collect extra lives in this section but you have to be ready to get them when they fall and most often than not I miss them and sometimes if you have the extra power-ups of the energy shield you can simply pile on into those collectibles so from that point on it's not that hard. This is yet another point where holding the controller stick with the left hand and hammering with the right hand fire button is handy because it should hopefully mean that we can hammer hammer away as quickly as we possibly can and yes I did used to use auto fire on this particular level. shield will also save us taking damage from little things dropping from the sky on this particular level and those things cannot be killed ordinarily unless you have a shield and look at that if we are waiting for that life we can collect it the power ups will drift up no problem the life however will disappear which is extremely annoying checking out every single one of these and that's another life that's 33 lives run at the moment so there is no chance look at that we can destroy these things if we have that energy shield but there is no chance at this point that we're going to fail the game not with that many lives and that just means that we can be brave and we can run away happily all the way through it unfortunately this level is one of the longest levels in the entire game it's not that difficult it's just that you have to pace your way through it just like wolf child that we saw 
On the third level, you have to be slow and take your time. And this is one of those levels where you have to painstakingly get through every section of it. And again, it's very linear. You're not really going to get lost. Great tip is to fire a grenade into the wall and that will explode whatever it is that the cash box is to create and that means if you're standing underneath that and fire a grenade against the wall that will blow up and you'll collect it but again those crates sometimes have extra lives that it's seemingly not possible to collect unless you're already stood underneath them. This is a very long and very time consuming level so we're gonna speed that footage up and you can see the formula for completing it doesn't really change that's good use your grenade to get rid of him and it doesn't really change as you're going all the way through it you can also see spiders on the floor i always thought that they were aliens jumping out but we will see proper aliens a bit later on and they were used and copied in all of the Turrican games and Turrican 2, Turrican 3 we all remember them and they were a staple and they will appear just a bit later on but before that there is this level and just like a similar level in Turrican 2 you have to pad around and get lost sometimes but there is no dragon to kill this time it's just a matter of going all the way around on 35 lives and that's another great benefit of this game if you don't die and collect all those extra lives you could be on maybe 50 by the time you get to the end of the game and I'm not sure if those lives are counted up but that definitely means that this game rewards the player and there are too many run and gun shooters out there that don't give you enough lives to complete it this one and all of the Turrican games actually do that and if you saw my Turrican 2 review from way back when I completed that with quite some lives and just marching through this as quickly as possible is usually the order of the day if I wasn't playing this for a competition. <laughs> Turrican was designed by Manfred Trenz and you might remember he also coded this on the C64 and the NES as well although it didn't become responsible for the other conversions and this game was coded by Holger Schmidt who went on to Star Wars Rebel Assault and Star Wars Rogue Squadron. This game was also produced by Julian Eggbright, who also went on to Star Wars Rogue Squadron 3D and also produced Resident Evil 2 and also Star Wars Episode 1. Apparently the name Turrican actually came from Turricano, which was a name that they found in the Dusseldorf phone book when they were looking for names. So they found Turricano, which sounds Italian to me, in the phone book, and that stuck. They said, right, Turrican, that'll do. 
So that's why we got Turrican. Turns up yet again another notch as we go down into hell this time and appropriate even higher speed music to accomplish that and hammering that fire button and hammering that space bar is the order of that day. This is another favourite level of mine, and you can see the background is different, I think, than the first one. And you can see things trying to get us, they will also change the background as well. And we can still get trapped as well. And so we don't really want to get trapped, we really want to move ahead in this game. And if we can destroy those spiky things by using those power lines or those grenades, it's really great, and of course, with the modern emulators, you can remap your controller button so that the grenade is on button B, the power line is on button C, and that means that you can get out of any trouble. Manfred Trends went on to Super Turrican and Mega Turrican and all those conversions and he also helped with Crazy Frog Racer in 2005. Of course, the loader of this game is famously based upon the Kings of Metal cover, the Man of War, and you can see that is very similar to the loader. The cover on the box was created by Julie Bell and Julie went on to Stride 2 cover art, Hardball, Splatterhouse 3, King of Dragons and Double Dragon 5. We've got 33 lives as we move on to that aliens level and you can see that the scenery will kill us, the blood and the acid dripping down will kill us, that's actually acid or it's supposed to be and you can see that well the waterfalls don't kill us but that's a seamless waterfall effect, you can see. And I'm exploring this level and you can see these spiders as well are pretty deadly. You can 
obviously we do get a background on this level and that's flashing and it's pulsating that was improved in later games they improved and improved and improved and of course by Turrican 3 that appeared on the Amiga that was very polished considering that all of these games appeared on the same Motorola 68000 triple all chipset from dawn till dusk yes even though this looks basic it's just because they were used to coding basic games at this point this was emerging from the EGA period so we do get multiple colours Like the other levels, it's quite easy to get lost in these, and you can really explore sometimes the corners of these levels, and you can really find things that you've never found before. And this particular area that I'm in at the moment, this is the bridge. If I jump over this thing, this is the bridge onto the second half of the level. If you can find that thing and jump over it, that means you've found it. And those maggots you can see pulsating away, those are slightly better than most sprites that we got. Look at that, what up! Let's collect all those power ups, and they unfortunately only make a, a ding sound when you connect those one ups, and it doesn't actually say it like it did on Turrican 2. That's another dead end, that's bad news, but it's also good news because it means we know which way we don't need to go. And on this particular level, all we need to do is to go down and to keep going down and to keep going down until we find something where we can climb up again. bottom of all this is a pit and you can jump out of that pit it's not like a spiky pit which will definitely take away a life just like that we can jump out if we are quick but that is a good feature there's nothing that I hate more than spiky pits that are instant death you can jump out and that's a good thing there are very few leaps of faith in this game although there is one definitely one and there are very few bad points, except for the fact that if I destroy this skull right here, I render the game impossible to complete, because I will then be unable to climb up and out, and that's a problem of certain sections of the game, which rely on skulls if you destroy the wrong one by mistake, it is possible to get yourself trapped and stuck, and you can get trapped and stuck in the scenery as well if you in that gyro ball so let's just speed through that footage and collect all the gems in this area and let's be careful not to destroy any skulls that we might need and yet again all these hidden areas you don't have to go through these you can simply rush straight through to the exit That's a very welcome life, that puts us back up to 32, and that is very welcome considering that we've now got a boss. Those bosses aren't a pushover, and even when we die, we do at least get the power-ups reset and the bombs and everything we've just spent them so that means we can't use them and the elephants into the room is the mines that we've got yes we've still got three mines what to use those for well I don't but you can use them towards the end of the game It 
It's a great atmosphere in this game, and full props have to go to Chris Hulsbeck, who was the final part of this Factor 5 crew from Germany. He created the music, very atmospheric music, and yet again, he improved his talents with Turrican 2 and Turrican 3. Music in this game isn't quite up there with Apedia and Turrican 3 and maybe some other games that we've seen already, but this is 1990 and that really does make a lot of difference because nothing like this had appeared really on the Amiga before this. And how many run and gun shooters can you name if it doesn't involve Switchblade 2, it doesn't involve something like Strider or, well, Terraway Thomas was run but it wasn't gun. What else was there? Rough and Tumble that we've seen, and so there weren't that many. Most of the games that we've seen, platform-wise, involved no shooting whatsoever. So, your jaw, I don't think you could shoot on that one either. And definitely Second Samurai had the platforming, but you had to wield a sword. So, running guns should be littering the Amiga everywhere, but there weren't that many, and... Well, I spent my time playing Super Hang On and Pang and things like that, but you can see with the shield, it's a romp all the way through this section. This is another cut through section that we've managed to find. This is another hidden section. Um, what does that reveal? Well, lots and lots of gems. This is something that I noticed on the Hall of Light maps. Anybody who's a fan of the Hall of Light, which hasn't been updated in a millennia, that place has the maps, and the whole map did reveal all of these gems. So, perhaps for the first time, I'm not sure, perhaps the last time, I'm now going to divert and collect all these. And there's also a below way as well that reveals a huge pyramid of gems. It's on the map, let's see if I can find it. And let's see if we can time this. And no, jump straight into the jaws of death. And that puts us all the way down there to 29 lives. Is this yet another dead end? Well, I can tell you now it is a dead end. And didn't have to go to all that trouble of putting all these dead ends in the game, but they did. And down here is more instant death. So if we touch that spike, you can see that's more instant death. And luckily we used rapid reactions to get rid of those enemies. But there are pits of death in this game, and those are sometimes annoying, but like I say, it counterbalances it because the charm of this game is apparent for me. It's got a really good charm, which I find really great if you love running gun shooters. Of course, if you're not a reaction fan, then perhaps this game isn't for you. And if you don't like exploring much, we explore every single thing for hours, then maybe this game isn't for you. But it's got different levels, different worlds of variety, different colour schemes in every world, and it's got gems to pick up. It's just a shame, of course, that we carry the same two weapon types all the way through the game, and the same power upgrades as well that we can collect, but we don't get anything special like a massive whirlwind screen clearing repulsor strong. We only get what we've got at the beginning. So, this game, for its time, if you like running gun shooters, it was kind of revolutionary. But, definitely didn't really get too many of these, and I definitely spent too many hours playing Yogi's Great Escape and other games that I'm not going to review in this series.
see I'm being very careful not to destroy any more skulls and I've got a feeling that we might be heading towards some kind of end of level and there it is, that's the end of the section, you just jump off the top and it miraculously changes into another level and it's important that you see those exit signs if you hang around and wait sometimes an exit sign will appear to show you the way to go that's definitely helpful on this particular level and that was particularly improved on the later turricans so as a template you might find this a bit two-dimensional but if you compare this to a running gun shooter today like the James Bond games or the Far Cry the Crisis games where you're literally jumping around and firing things and destroying aliens well this was a template for all that only it's in 2D Now entering the final section of this level and it's pretty difficult sometimes because if you lose your foot in you'll fall down. And this final section comprises of four towers that we can climb up and I think it's the third tower along that gives us the ascent to the end of the level. And of course guess what, I'm going to have to climb all of these towers, climb all these bonuses, collect everything up if I want a half decent score in the competition. That means wasting lives, and that means we're down to 22 lives now. And definitely these aliens levels on all of the Turrican games are notorious for robbing all of your lives away that you've spent trying to collect. But no worries, because we have collected them, we have spent that time, we have got them, so all I'm doing at the moment is wasting time collecting all of the gems. Let's waste no more time, let's climb up another tower and collect more gems. And it's a good job that there are so many dead ends in this game, because it would be annoying to go off in the wrong direction and find yourself all the way back up to the start. Because going all the way back to the starting games is a pain, and checkpoints are even a pain. When you should die, you should reappear, just where you died. And this game does do that. So the playability on offer really is top notch for me, there's no waypoints, checkpoints, there's no back to the starts, it's right there, action from where you left off. And if it wasn't for a screen clearing effect where it spirals in and out, you could literally respawn the character, just like that, you could respawn him directly on the spot, and I think that was improved slightly in the later Turrican games. Definitely one of the downsides is the length of some of these levels. Sometimes the player is getting bored before they get to the top, and certainly I'm getting a bit bored waiting to complete this one. Speeding up this footage, you can see we're going on another diamond hunt. And it's so easy sometimes to fall into the trap of those enemies and die. With this particular boss, you can't roll into the rollerball, it will kill you on its spikes. But you look at that, you can see that the enemy can't even reach us if we're standing in this corner. That means we are invulnerable, and even dropping mines will kill it. But we are invulnerable, and we can kill it with that laser. It's 
a great event when things blow up and you'll hear it cracking and then exploding onto that screen and that's a great effect because that thing doesn't rub us of energy it just blows up and blows out you see these vampire bats will multiply if you leave them on the screen so it's a good idea to get rid of them and holding down that fire button as quickly as possible and the drops will kill us on this section and it's a long way down should we fall and that's another annoying aspect if you're not very good with controls we can go left or right here i think let's take the left hand route and again let's get those adams family bats out of the way before they multiply and breed their way across that level Congratulations, you've now reached the top of the level, or at least most of it, so hopefully if I carry on in this direction we'll just get to the last bit, which is pretty difficult, because on this section, or at least these sections coming up, you have to stand with your feet on the very end, look at that, on the very end of the spike, not on the platform, on the spike, and if you can do that then you won't bang your head on the roof and fall all the way down, and particularly this next jump here. That's yet again another annoying part, and I must have repeated that a billion times. Luckily, that's the end of that level, the end of that music, the end of all those aliens. And for our time of trouble, it gives us nothing at all except a huge bunch of skulls to get through to get to the next level. This is World 5, and in World 5 things get to the maximum because this is the final world, and this is a big long level as well. And let's try the left hand route which leads nowhere at the start, but that will give us a bit more score. And I know if we carry on going over to the right, we should find some extra lives. Let's stop messing around, there is no point, look at that, I found a weapons cache. Usually there's absolutely no point if you find a dead end and it's always worth collecting them. You can see we're over 1.2 million in score. So let's run and gun. Try to find those extra lives. Enemies are pretty lethal and they will destroy our firepower at this particular stage so you're going to have to count on most of your lives at this stage so 18 lives isn't too bad and you'll have to find the absolute perfect formula because if you don't then you might be wandering around blindly. Luckily it does give us, even at this stage, the weapons caches. So even though the background is pretty bland and we don't get any of those amazing sky effects on this level, we do get that technology in the background, which is pretty amazing for a block map game. And you can see that they have gone to some detail. We don't just have ordinary blocky backgrounds and background levels. And you can see that we're using the mines in this case to clear some of the droids on the level. And those things can be destroyed by using the mines, that's definitely a good way to use them up. Another 
Otherwise, we can be glad that we've got the grenades. Firing those into a wall will help us clear everything away on that level. I find it's so easy to get lost on this particular level, and I've got lost on this lots and lots of times. I've been playing this now for over an hour, so my reactions aren't particularly great. So what I'm going to do is speed up that footage again, so we can get through a lot of this exploring and messing up going into the wrong direction. I think Turrican is quite a futuristic game, wearing a full Robocop suit, and this was heavily inspired by Japanese culture at the time, because they had lots of characters, like fighting robots in suits that used to go around in the 1970s, some of those shows you might have even heard about, and if you've seen the end of Dude Where's My Car, or many of the AVGN films at the end of the AVJ movie you'll find a robot in a suit and these kind of suits well this reminds me of Shredder in 1990 the robot suit or it also reminds me perhaps of a German army helmet but you can see those flashes on the knees and things like that the upturns like Flash Gordon and things like that it definitely took lots of elements but I think with Keiko involved and things like that they tried to get as many otherworldly Japanese elements in there as possible. So the music is tremendous in this final level, and that's why the albums have been mixed and remixed countless times over the years. Moving on to those scores, Amiga Power gave this game 73%. Dato Magazine gave it 80%, Amiga Action awarded this 83, the current Lemon Amiga score is 84, Amiga Format gave this 88, Zero awarded Turrican 90%, Sea Amiga gave it 91%, The Games Machine gave it 92, and Ace Magazine gave it 91%. So that gives this an average score of 8.5 out of 10. I'm circling this red block at the moment because this is the magic red block that leads on to the second half of that level and once I've passed this point, hopefully it's a point of no return, hopefully we won't drop all the way back down again. So it's those waypoints which are definitely important to memorise because it makes life easier, it saves us backtracking and it means that we know where to go on the level. Turrican was released on a bunch of machines as well as, well, of course, the Sega and the Nintendo. And you can see that the Commodore 64 version is a very valiant attempt. This was actually programmed and pioneered on the Commodore 64 by Manfred Trends and then converted onto the Amiga and the NES. And he wasn't happy with the NES conversion because it was a rush job and he didn't manage to get all the features in there but NES was marketed comparable to a Commodore 64 
but unfortunately it wasn't exactly the same hardware. On the Amiga you can see Turrican is mostly made out of jumps and as a jumping game we have to jump from one thing to another I'm sure some bright spark has managed to get through to the end of it simply jumping their way through shooting the boxes open but not killing any enemies So the art of platforming or dexterously trying to get yourself out of trouble is the art of this game and sometimes you can get yourself into trouble Notice that even in that gyro ball we can fire oil laser and as we're gyrating all around in a circle we can fire the laser as long as we have that or our other weapon and that means that we can fire on the move and that wasn't really implemented to its best in this game they didn't even focus on that so you don't even have to know about that feature but it is there and it can get us out of trouble most of the time we can roll into trouble on this level especially after we've spent ages and ages trying to get to the top of it. I also like the welcome to Terrican, ha oh, ha 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 ha, at the beginning. And that isn't quite as good, a yes again, as the Commodore 64 version, which despite all of its flaws, was an expanded version. Another day, another try. That kind of thing, and I definitely remember that. But they couldn't manage that, unfortunately, on the Amiga, but they did manage to cram in a little bit more. It's a shame that the compression of it meant that it had to go onto two discs, as far as I know, and it meant that you had to play this by swapping them about but it wasn't quite up there as the absolute masterpiece top of the range that the Amiga could offer in its lifetime but for 1990 there wasn't much around that could really challenge this in terms of exploring, running and gunning Hopefully at some point we'll manage to get out of this level and we'll manage to find the top of it and it's deceptive that some parts are difficult and if you don't know where to go, like I haven't played this in ages and say since the C64 review I can't find my way out of it but I'm pretty sure it has to be into this direction and maybe if we find a boss that will definitely tell us or we can find the way out. So just like Turrican 2, once you find the last level, you go to the left, you get those extra lives which I definitely needed in this case, and then that's pretty much the end of the level. You can rise through it and destroy some scenery and that will reveal the way forward without any enemies in there, that means the way is clear to get to the boss. So that just means I'll wrap up by saying yes this was a phenomenon and it's day the music, the sound effects, the level maps, which they drew on paper and drew it all out on paper beforehand and then carved it all into what turned out to be the C64 version and I think the bulk of players played that on the cassette which took ages and ages to load but the C64 music is massively memorable even though it sounds nothing like the Amiga version so every instance of this game was different, every incarnation of it was different, so this game is a classic and many players do love this game even though it was superseded of course by the later Turricans and as I say if you can imagine this in 3D these days with Portal and Half-Life and everything else well it was there, this is definitely a step up from the games that I used to play on the Commodore 64 
And it reminds me of all those crazy Japanese games that I didn't actually get to play until I played those on an emulator. And maybe we'll get to see some of those in later reviews. Finally, and hopefully, I can jump out of this pit, and that means we can face the final boss. And that means after all this time, let's see if I can get 1.5 million from this slog through the game. And no, we didn't manage that on that life, but let's try that again. And throw everything we've got into that boss. And that means once that face is destroyed, we are saving this corner, but of course we need to get to the other corner to destroy the other face. So we need to roll there just in time, and quickly enough so that we can make that trip, hopefully, and then get on with doing that. And after you've defeated those three faces of evil, that's the boss over. And that's a very satisfying end to this game. I know some of the cracks will crash before you get to this final congratulations screen and this epic music. Skipping through, we can press fire on the almighty fun stick and that will reveal another unique music title if we get first on a high score. So thank you for viewing another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. See you again in another one sometime soon. Thank you.